Hi, everybody. It's Chuck Gilmore with Power to Sing Live and High Tech uh, Music. <laughs> I, uh, welcome, and uh, great to have you here today. I hope that music was a little bit, made a little bit more interesting. Um, so, uh, how is everyone doing? We're doing... We're doing extra, we're doing uh, broadcast number one hundred and twenty-eight. Today we're going to talk about difficulty singing high notes. I know that none of you have any issues like that. Uh, however, <laughs> for the for those of us who do have difficulty singing high notes, that's what we're going to be talking about today. So um, let's see here. Just want to make sure that everything's, uh, how about, uh, let me just show you who I am. Let me uh, try that. <laughs> how about this? Hello, I'm Chuck. So, okay, I'm going to fix this a little bit here. So, okay. Now, do you have difficulty singing high notes? Yes or no? Let me know. Do you have difficulty singing high notes? I certainly had my years where I did have difficulty singing high notes. And um, wow, you know, it, it actually did go away after a number of years. And um, I had much, much less difficulty. And there's some reasons for that. And we'll talk about those today and give you, oh, two or three or more uh, exercises that are going to make a difference in how easy it is to sing high notes. But do you have difficulty singing high notes? Let me know. Nuno, hello. How are you doing? I am doing well, thanks. Joe Weston, nice to have you here, Joe. I'm feeling fine. And uh, my, my voice is feeling better than it has for a while, probably because I'm in a show and I'm in rehearsal. And so I'm getting plenty of vocal exercise right now. Um, THP, nice to have you here, THP. I don't know that I recognize your handle. Um, THP says your videos are helping me. Thank you. I'm glad they're helping. And that's, that's my mission is to spread the good word about this uh, uh, about what's capable in your voices, in all of our voices. Uh, Jose Garcia, yes, okay, good. You've come to the right place today, Jose. Uh, Joe says, oh yes, I've always had difficulty singing really high notes. You know, and let's be honest here and fair. Uh, there are, there's always going to be some limit. You know, we we can't go on forever singing high notes. Here's mine. <laughs> um, so, THP says anything over middle C is hard for me. Okay, well, we'll, we'll talk about that today. And I think that's really a, a, a note that I'm going to make right now. Um, and that is, there's something called the bridge. And so one reason um, why we have challenges is the bridge. Some people call it the break area, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, you're, you still sing higher than me. <laughs> um, okay, I do not have until D6. Oh, okay, I don't until D6. Well, okay, well, Nuno, you're up there, man. Um, never sung up there myself. THP, first time here. Great, nice to have you here. Okay, so why do we have challenges singing high notes there there is a place above our chest our low notes okay and so when i was younger i stopped at the e above middle c a d became labored and difficult e flat was almost impossible E, I felt like I was always str straining and reaching, and F, I wouldn't try uh, because I either had to yell it or I had to go in the falsetto. So I might say, ah, 
what? I did musical theater and you can't be a character on stage and, you know, be talking like this. And then all of a sudden when you start singing, you sing, ah, because it doesn't work. It doesn't work with your character. <laughs> I wasn't playing Mickey Mouse or Minnie Mouse, right? So it sounds like, hello, everybody. Um, and so I just, I thought that that was the end of the voice. So uh, the P, THP, maybe you're in the same condition that I was in. And that is, you just felt like that's all there was in the voice. And th there's a reason why we all experience that. For the ladies, primarily, now if you're a contralto with a very low female voice, it's the same as the, as the tenors and basses, uh, or the tenors and baritones and many of the basses, and that's the E above middle C. That's called the bridge. It's the beginning of a transition. And for the uh, so most sopranos and altos, sopranos and mezzos, their bridge is the A, starts at the A above middle C. So when they get up to your, that's where it starts to happen for them, where it starts to feel tight and difficult. And some people say, well, that's my break. But it's not the break, it's the bridge. And it is a transition from the low voice chest to the high voice head. I didn't even, I had never even heard of that concept. Growing up, I don't know if I even talked much about chest voice. I can't remember where I first heard the phrase, chest voice, the, the words. Or, and I don't know if I ever heard the, maybe I heard the words head voice, but I just knew that I didn't have head voice. I only had chest. I had a high chest and, you know, squeezed chest and pinched chest, but and I'm sure that you guys have all experienced that. What I really want, the message I really want to get out to the world is you're wrong about your voice. You do have an upper range in your voice. There is something after that spot that seems like it's the top. It's not the top. You're hitting the bridge. You're hitting the, the top of chest. But there is more there. Okay. Um, C H E C H L E Boo. Shaley Boo. <laughs> there he is, my favorite singing trainer. <laughs> yes, well, nice to have you here today, too. Um, okay. So Nuno Silva says, is being relaxed helpful when singing high notes? Yes, it is helpful. In fact, we need less air and less loudness as we sing higher. And so if we can relax, uh, provide a steady airflow, but not, not, not necessarily a, a lot more air and a lot more loudness or higher or greater volume, we don't, it's, it makes it harder to sing louder. It makes it harder to sing um, with more, a more a, you know a bigger blast of air on the high notes, we want to do the opposite. It's counterintuitive. We want to use less air and less loudness, and it makes it easier. Simon Jeffrey, hi, uh, woo, hi, uh, nice to have you here today. Are you on Facebook, Chuck? I'm not. I don't think I'm broadcasting live right now to Facebook. One of these days, I've, I have just. I'm looking into Restream so that I can send it to Restream and then have it go to Facebook and to YouTube. But I am on Facebook, uh, Power to Sing, but I don't think it's broadcasting live there today. I will be, and I'll let people know when I'm able to do that. I just have to sit down and figure it out. Emmy uh, Pellegrino. Hi, Emmy. I'm having trouble transitioning from... Um, head to whistle. I currently can't get above the A, B, 6. Help with whistle. I mean, I'm not so certain I'm the guy for helping you with whistle. I'm, I, I can help you with your high head voice, but uh, whistle, you know, maybe you're ref if you're referring to high head voice, I might be able to, to do something for it. But uh, as far as going into the 
and to a disconnected kind of like uh, out of this world upper upper whistle i'm i'm not i'm not really good at that luis ferreria de costa nice to have you here luis we are considered baritones if the passaggio starts earlier uh, no, the baritones bridge at the E above middle C, same places as tenors and many basses. So it is the, yeah, it's middle E, so to speak. It's the E4 is where your bridge is as a baritone. Para, para, um, paratha partim, Bora, good afternoon. Nice to have you here. And uh, Royal Jesus Sir, can you say that Chaduk 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 I don't know. PB, I'm going to give you those initials. I was watching your video, forgot that you're live. I am live and you are live on the comments. From Assam. Awesome. Awesome Assam. Awesome. Great to have you to be with us today. Jose says, I do get the feeling sometimes when singing higher that if I try less breath, it's easier. But anything longer than a second or two, I start pulling my chest. It does take some practice, Jose, for sure. Um, Luis, uh, André Espitibu. So Nuno is speaking a foreign language. Uh, PB says, here in my place where I stay, there is no Western vocal teacher. How can I learn to sing? Uh, PB, I teach on Skype, and I know there are many others who do also. If you have access to the internet, um, it's a lot easier. Uh, also, I sell some courses that can help. All right, let's get down to the, the brass tacks here of, um, of our topic today, difficulty singing high notes. The bridge is, is, is what we encounter as we're singing higher. And uh, if this vibration is in chest or early on, and then the pitch goes up, we start feeling the vibration here in the throat. I do. And that vibration is moving up with the pitch as the pitch goes higher. When we start to feel that, it's freaky. I didn't know, as I mentioned in high school, I thought that was where I stopped because I didn't know how to handle it. And I would crack or break. And I didn't want to do that, and so I would strain and pull the pull the chest voice higher and higher, where I'd go flat, and you know, and so uh, I just assumed. And I was studying with the teacher. I was assumed, and she never said anything about it. She didn't talk to me about head voice or the possibility of transitioning into the bridge and so forth. So I just knew that that was the top, and so my high note was E, and everything I sang, all my music and everything, was below that. Well, you don't do you don't go very far if that's all you can do. If you're limited by that bridge, whether you're male or female singer, uh, if you have if you hit the bridge and that's all you can go, all the further you can go. Now, ladies have to, because most of their voice is above that. Most of our voice is below it, so we can live with that limitation. But the ladies can't, so they'll break into falsetto and cover that falsetto sound. And so they might be disconnected in the falsetto, but it's easier. But but then they can't blend back down to the chest voice without it cracking. So let's talk about how to get through the bridge. And because there's some of you who've never been here before, I want you to experience this. Would you just say, uh, and I'll start it with the guys. <clears throat> so you say, uh, you put your fingers here. And you say, uh, U-H, uh, uh, and then you say, uh, with that bubble, or lip trill, some people call it. If you're doing this, and I'd encourage you to do it with me, make sure that the tone stays connected. In other words, we don't want to, we don't want to be saying, uh, uh, 
You know, we don't want to crack, even when they're doing the bubble, don't let it crack. Don't let it come apart. In a second, I'll do the girls, but guys, if, if you start to crack, bend over like this and say, Bend down halfway and do that uh, like you're looking right at the floor. Now, whether you realize it or not, you're in, if you've remained connected in a connected tone, you have gone through the bridge by this point. I stopped at the A flat above middle C. Now, let's keep going on here for the ladies. That exercise, as silly as it seems, was the first time I ever experienced going up into my head voice without breaking into falsetto, without cracking. So as soon as I did that, and we did it on a long scale. As soon as I did that, I knew something was different. I had just vocalized in a place I had never vocalized before without cracking or breaking. It was such an interesting feeling. And that's the beginning. That's the beginning sensation. Now, what's so great about that bubble? Well, it allows the vocal, first of all, it keeps the larynx down. It, it's, it, it's, it's, it's getting some it causes a little bit of back pressure, air, air pressure that's back, backing down to the throat and it keeps that larynx down, plus the, the combination of the bubble and the vowel that we're using. And, and so you don't want to do it too fast or too tight. It's got to be nice and slow, floppy. The tongue trill is another great one. Everything we just did with another great exercise that does the same thing. It helps keep the larynx down. Now, what does that do? The, so the the larynx stays down, but the vocal cords have to. They're adjusting. So they're adjusting for the pitch and they're making that transition. So the vibrations now are going up into the head, but the larynx is staying down. This is the exact condition we have to maintain to sing up there. And so if you've never done this before, this is a real eye opener because it leads to other things. Let me take a couple comments here. Um, Okay, so um, Royal G. Hi, Royal G. This might help you, sir. Uh, Chandu Cha Cha Tu times. Chandu Cha Cha Tu. Chan, Chandu Cha Cha Tu. Oh, cha, Chandu Cha Cha. 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 Yeah. So uh, I don't know why I'm saying it. <laughs> Okay, uh, Emmy says, I, I meant head voice, uh, not head once. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, Emmy, so this is a, this exercise here is what you want to, because you're having a little trouble up high, which, and, and up in the six, you know, up in the six octaves, that's pretty high. But oftentimes it's because lower, lower down, let's just say in the first bridge, it's a little bit squeezed. There's a little bit of squeeze in it, a little bit tight. 
and maybe the larynx is coming up a little bit and you start feeling it in the second and the third bridge and by the fourth it just chokes it right out. So first step I would say Emmy for you is just to double check to make sure that everything lower is okay too. Royal G, uh, should we eat throxine, throxine, throxine to uh, sing better high notes? No. Emmy, head voice, high head voice, I got. Uh, let's learn whistle together. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, Emmy. Simon, uh, why is that bending that helps? Two reasons, Simon. First of all, you have to pull your tummy in when you bend like that. And secondly, it takes the attitude of reach. Uh, reaching up, it takes, that feet, it takes that out because you're looking down. So it kind of plays with, plays with your head. The brain is seeing the floor coming. It's coming. You're going down. And so it, it throws us off a little bit psychologically because we're, we're headed down, but the notes are headed up. And so it actually enables us to hit the pitch because we're not worried about, uh, you know, trying to reach that high note. We're bending down to the floor, and it just goes there. So we're kind of uh, we're we're doing something that is interrupting our habit. We're interrupting the habit of reaching up for the high note. Uh, Nuno Silva says. Emmy's whistle is just a bleep on the radar. <laughs> Try to focus on <laughs> Well, you know. Uh, okay. Uh, PB says, just now a heavy earthquake shaked our house here. Wow, PB, all right. That's, um, I'm guessing you're okay since you typed in this message. Uh, last time I'm told the 16, so PB says, last time I told I'm 16. My dream is to become a great singer. Okay. Um, PB, where did you say you were from? Did you tell us uh, Assam? You're from Assam? I am from Assam. And there was an earthquake there just now. Wow, what time is it there? Shook the house. Well, I hope you have no damage. And, uh, well, yes, we are fine. Wow, that's wild. Well, thanks for sharing that with us. Thanks for hanging out. I know I'll understand. We'll all understand if you need to go. Um, Nuna Silva, uh, Emmy is, you guys are having a chat. I'm going to skip and you guys uh, keep talking if you would like. Um, Emmy says, I'm having a hard time training my male students to get over the bridge. Of course, I understand more of the female tricks in conquering the bridge, but I have some trouble translating them uh, sometimes. Uh, so, Emmy, um, let's go on to another exercise here. The, the bubble lip is a, a really great first experience. And to keep it simple, stay on the five-tone ah. And, and everybody that's learning this, do this. The, And on up. Now, if they can't do the bubble lip or they can't do the tongue trill, then another way of helping them is, and maybe Emmy, you're finding that they just break in the falsetto. Um, but if if they're if they're if they're breaking in the falsetto, I'll give you another exercise in a second. But for those who can't do, so I think I've already given more than three exercises, but let's just go here. Um, if you can't do or the tongue trill, do it on goo. Goo, 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 Let it go a little bit hooty on the top. Goo, 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 Now, the first thing the guys always say is, but that's falsetto. Nope. Unless you said, goo, 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 it cracks, that's falsetto. But if you're just going into that lighter place, goo, 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 
That's head voice. It's light head voice, but that's the beginning. We've got to open that door. We've got to get through there without cracking and breaking. So, Emmy, what's what's the problem do you see mostly? Are the guys breaking? Are they just stopping? Are they um, doing it too? You know, what's what's the main problem that you're seeing when you try and get them? Now, also remember, if they're 15, 16, and 17 years old, it's hard for the the finest teacher in the world, okay? Because you're dealing with um, the ho the hormonal changes going on in the male voice, and it's different from day to day. It's changing every day. Uh, what works one one time, the next week, it's like they'd never even seen you before. It's just because of the changes. So it's very challenging for teen boys. Uh, Majoy lot. When I sing in uh, my mixed voice, it kind of feels very heady. How do I get it more chesty? Let's, let's, take that, let's take that question. I'll answer that in just a second with another exercise, okay? It's a great question. Jose says, question about the exercises. After doing these exercises for a while, does it just automatically correct your technique after so much repetition? In a very large measure, yes. Jose, because you're, you're retraining muscle memory. We all have muscle memory. We've done it for years the way we do it, right? <clears throat> but that may not be correct. And so these exercises retrain the nervous system to begin accepting a different feeling. For example, if I said... <laughs> For somebody who's never done that before, it's just, it's, it's so foreign. And so we tend to tense up or grab it, you know. And so the exercises definitely help retrain the nervous system in a very significant way. Great question. Nuna says, I am Emmy, I'm learning how to control them. Okay, you guys are still chatting. Omkar, Dandakar. One question, is there any exercise for practicing high notes using various vowels? Donkar, I'm going to come back. Donkar, I'm going to come. Uh, Omkar, I'm going to come back to that. Jose, if there is a phrase I'm singing and I can't reach a certain high note, what exercise can I do at that moment to try and hit the desired note? First thing I'd say is, if you have a phrase and it hits the A, let's say, or it's up here, and whatever, for whatever reason you can't hit it, go right to the bubble lip. All right, now I'm gonna I'm gonna answer the last three questions. We're gonna do nay nay nay. That's gonna help increase the strength uh, of the the headier head voice. It's going to give you a little bit. It's going to give you a little more power in that. That's going to answer that question. It's also going to connect voices through the bridge that maybe are having difficulty, even with an, even with the bubble lip, and um, and we're also going to um, we're also going to do a gi 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 gi, which also addresses those three things, and and then I'll uh, talk for a minute about vowels. In fact, I'll give you an exercise to practice hitting high notes using various vowels. Let me just make a note of that. So I dropped my pencil. Um, so I want to do um, ooh, oh, ah. Okay. Now, some of these exercises, actually, I, I posted in last week's video. Uh, you want to catch them. And then this coming week, some of these are going to be in there, too. But, you know, everybody, everybody's looking. And for some of you who've heard it before, um, maybe this is going to, there'll be something I say differently that's going to click and, ma and make it even more understandable. So the repetition is very valuable, especially for those who've never experienced before. All right. So another way of getting to the bridge. In other words, another way of getting easier to sing high notes is to use the nay, nay, nay. And I'm going to give you a different exercise. You can do it on this one. So, Emily, uh, Emmy, you can do this. Nay, 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 nay. With the guys and the girls. But here's another exercise you can do it on. 
This will make the high, the high notes easier because we're gonna we're gonna work on the connection between the chest and the head. Nay, 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 nay. So you want it's a little bit off level. The larynx is slightly high with that nay, nay, nay. This is called the pharyngeal sound. Um, you do it, add a little bit of an exaggerated nay, 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 nay. That's the A flat, and I'm going through now as as a, in the in the male bridge. I'm going through the my second, most everyone's first bridge. That's the E F F sharp. So we're going right through there, and it's all staying connected. You notice I didn't say nay, 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 nay. Nick and crack. Nay, 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 nay. Now for the ladies, this is the beginning of your sec of your first bridge. Nay, 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 nay. Now this really works, but a big mistake I've made my myself in the past, and I've and uh, I've seen it in others, is people try and do it too loud. And you don't have to do it really, really intensely um, exaggerated. It doesn't have to be nay, 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 nay. It doesn't have to be that way. It can be just a, a medium volume to soft even. Nay, 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 nay. But can you hear that tone's connected? Do you realize what that means? You're singing, what is it? It's not pulled up chest. It's not falsetto. You're starting to be able to, to mix the voice. You've got a combination of chest and head. Is it a finished sound? Is it a finished tone? No. But once the nervous system begins to accept it and you get more and more comfortable with it on different exercises, let's say it's this one. Nay, 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 nay. Nay, 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 nay. Nay, 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 nay. You know, you're connecting the chest through the bridge and into your head voice. And that's the first step. You've got to have that before you can expect to sing easily in your head and not have it break into falsetto. <clears throat> All right, so uh, <clears throat> the question was how can you get uh, the head voice stronger? This is a great exercise. You get that down and get it so it's comfortable and you're not straining and, and pulling and reaching and so forth. Then you want to, to eliminate that exaggerated sound over, over a period of time. You want to get back to the normal speech sound. In your voice. Nay, 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 Okay. It's like anything else. How do I get abs? Well, go to the gym. How long is it going to take? That depends on how much you eat and how often you go to the gym and your genetics. <laughs> so you've got to put in the time and um, you have to do the exercises correctly. And in time, it comes, it develops. Um, all right, let's take the other exercise, the gi gi gi. It's another, it's another alternative. It's going to help connect the chest to the head. Uh, let me just take a couple comments here. Um, uh, Amkar, I'm going to come back to the one on the vowels. Um, so I'll get that. If there's a phrase, Jose says, uh, is there a phrase I'm singing and I can't reach a certain high note? What exercise can I do at that moment to try and hit the desired note? So, Jose, if, if I were singing... Like a bridge! If I couldn't sing like a bridge, 
like a, I don't know what's happening. Maybe my voice cracked or it was, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> or I was um, squeezing it or the, it was breaking at the top or the voice was cutting out. I would start out with that same thing we just did. Nay, 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 nay. Now don't just do it on the key. Take it up a half a step. Nay, nay, nay. Nay, 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 nay. And then come back down to the original key. And uh, and do that several times. Do it on nay nay nay. Now let me introduce another one. And then go back to the words. Like like a bridge, like a bridge over troubled waters. So that's one option to it. Another one is to use this gee gee gee, and this is how it goes. It's different than the nay nay nay. It's a slightly imposed larynx, so you add a little bit of a dopey sound to it. Gee 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 gee. And if I'm doing it correctly, it's going to go a little hooty or a little hollow sounding at the top. Gee 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 gee. Now on these exercise, all of these exercises, be sure and start it in your chest voice and end it in your chest voice because that's what songs do, right? They always start low and go up high and you have to come back down to them. Now, some of them start high, but we almost always either have to, we have to go into both our chest and our head voices and go through the bridges. So make sure you're, you're, um, you're starting and ending in chest or you're starting and ending in head, whichever. So all the exercises we did today, same thing with this, same scales with the gi. This is another great exercise. So if the nay 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 is not working, So you can gradually work into the words uh, from these exercises. So we've done, we've done bubble lips, which is a great way to open the door. We've done the nay, nay, nay to connect the bottom to the top to get through that, that area there that wants to crack or break. And we've done the gee, gee, gee. It's another way of connecting the bottom to the top. And um, it's, uh, again, that exercise you want to discontinue the dopey sound as soon as it starts to be your muscle memory starts to uh, allow you to do it routinely repetitively without difficulty get more and more normal so that you're getting back to your regular voice okay so if you were to apply that exercise to you hear the hootie sound now as a caution, don't let it crack. Gee, 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 gee. You can't do that. It's all about connecting the tone. If any of these present difficulty, bring the loudness down. Another huge challenge, a huge problem I see, is that many of us, we come into this with very big, strong chest voices and then very light, very weak head voice. So I want you to consciously subtract 
subtract the amount of chest voice in your voice when you're practicing. Take it down so that it matches the head voice and start exercising that way. So rather than saying, bring the volume down on the chest voice. Reduce it to match the upper. You're going to find that's going to help you improve faster almost than anything else you could do. All right, a couple uh, more comments. Then I'm going to answer the question of exercises with different vowels for high notes. Um, okay, so <clears throat> Prudent Knights, greeting. Nice to have you here. Jose, thanks. Uh, Chuck, thanks. I think you're a great teacher. Well, thank you. Planning on taking a lesson in the near future. Jose, I look forward to it. Please, let's do. Ink, King. Chuck, does singing in head voice light when making then training it to become full voice work for every single person because all voices are different. Um, I haven't ever met anybody that just started out loud and strong in head voice. In my experience, I have not ever had anybody just do that um, and then still have their bridges do really well and have their chest voice do really well. It's really about balance. And so um, we think it's taking longer, but in the long run, uh, it's about bringing the voice up together. So if you have to bring everything down to get the voice to balance, and then er gradually increasing the, the volume and the ability of the cords and the air from the lungs to figure out this balance between the two, it'll be very powerful. And it won't be that long, but it'll be done correctly. Because <clears throat> the... the Temptation is always to skip over some something and you come back to it and you think, oh my gosh, I can't sing there softly. <laughs> I can only do it loud. How many times have I heard that? I can do it, but I have to do it loud. I can't do it soft. And that's because there was some step that was missed. Um, okay, so um, Amkar says, sure, we'll be looking forward. I am asking this question as I'm faced with the challenge of scratch scratching as I go up. I need to uh, record a song which does have notes mid to high. So scratch Amkar, um, I found if I can just add a little bit of that dopey sound to an exercise. In other words, the dopey sound, duh, duh. You can see if I say duh, it pulls the larynx down. If I take, keep that dopey sound in gee, 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 I can get rid of the scratchy sound in the exercises. And if I still have scratch in the song, it's because the larynx is coming up. So you can practice the song, though, with the dopey sound. So if I was singing, just like I did with like Bridge Over Troubled Water, Practice it with a dopey gee. And you're, you're going to find, surprisingly, that the scratch goes away. Don't know exactly why. I know there's something scientific behind it, but that's the exercise to get it to happen. Elshen, please talk about belt two. Oh, gosh. Um, Elshen, I think that's... Uh, I'm not really qualified to talk about belt. I... Um, I don't even know what you mean when you say belt. I'm not sure what that means. There's about a dozen different uh, ways to define it. Tuchuk's really, oh, uh, at Amkar, I'm, I'm a female that can sing baritone. Um, okay, H, uh, a blat, B-H-A-T-T-D-B. Talking makes my voice tired. How can I deal with vocal tiredness? It's a tough one. Vo talking makes my voice tired too. So I have to keep it engaged. I can't just relax and be talking from here. When I say engaged, I've got to, be, I've got to engage the diaphragm. I've got to keep everything. Um, I, I would say it's probably the biggest tip is that this, I need to be breathing from here. 
and pulling my tummy in as I'm speaking. That helps me project. It takes the pressure off the vocal cords and allows my voice to fully function. And I want to change the pitches. I don't want to speak too loud. I, you know, I want to vary, ver, add variety to my voice. So there's a little inflection up. I don't want to be jamming it down in the bottom all the time. I don't want to be uh, having to uh, speak at a high level of, of, intens of, of, of loudness like a teacher does all day long. It's very, very challenging for teachers. I've had multiple teachers who have needed just to have warm-ups and warm-downs after their day of speaking. So I can recommend doing some low larynx exercises um, to warm down and to warm up before and after you have to speak all day long or uh, whatever it is that you do, um, DB. What's your career? Is it something that you're doing in your work? Giovanni says, 30, 36 says, can you explain how to press into some note to get loudness and sing that way? Yeah. So let me combine that answer with this one. <clears throat> this is changing vowels on, on one note, on a high note. If I said, noon, 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 see, ooh, oh, ah. Um, no 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 now this exercise is done incorrectly if i said no 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 you hear how the first one i had my head voice in or i had head and chest in a mix no 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 no, no, no. But if I said no, 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 I'm doing it correctly because the next vowel, which is O, is more open than U. I'm leaving it in the same feeling. It's following into that same condition the U was. Now, the third one, ah, is about as open as you can get. But I'm leaving it in the same place the ooh was. Ooh. Look what happens if I, if, if I open the O oh and the ah beyond the more narrower or smaller place that the ooh is in. You can tell that it's losing a mixture of chest and head and just going into chest. <laughs> Falls down into the mouth. The vibrations maybe were here and here. I had two of them go at the same time. <laughs> It'll crack and break. So you you have to practice keeping that second and third more open vowel in the more narrow place. So when you're singing um, a song and you have all these different vowels, this is a great exercise to develop the ability to stay in the same feeling, stay in the mix feeling or the head voice feeling every time. No, 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 no. But I didn't say no, 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 no. So that's the exercise that will train your ability to stay um, in, a, in a mix or a head voice, even though the vowel is changing from note to note and from pitch to pitch. Now, um, here's, what, here's how you practice leaning harder into that note, which was the last question that uh, we were looking at. Um, it's disappeared. I, it went on up. Uh, but um, let me see if I can find that again. Where did it go? Which question was it here? Um, oh, yeah. Okay. So Giovanni, 36. Can you explain how to press into some note? Okay. 
The way you lean into a note is you, is how I just demonstrated. You crescendo while you're changing the vowel or just crescendo on the same vowel, but leave it in its more narrow configuration. In other words, I'm crescendoing, but I'm not allowing the vibration to drop down into my mouth and into chest voice. So if I just, I won't even, I won't change vowels. Now, if I, if I spread that vowel, so you, the concept is you got to keep the vowel the same as you're, as you're crescendoing, as you're practicing that. If I, if I open the vowel, then I'm going to lose the, lose it. So I want to keep that vowel pure as I get louder, as I crescendo. And of course, if I were changing vowels, do the same thing. The second and third vowel or second vowel needs to stay right where the first one put it. So we're getting louder in that more in that smaller, more narrow place. I'm not letting it spread or go wide, the vowel or the tone. I widen it too much. But if I lose uh, the control of the vowel so that it splats wide, then, you know, you can't do it. Uh, but that's a great, that, that exercise, now, that's an advanced exercise. You might try it this way. No, 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 no. Same principle, though. You keep those subsequent vowels in the same place. I saw an interview of Pavarotti who showed uh, the F. He said something like, and he, <laughs> I can't do it like he did it. He did an open vowel uh, on the F. And I don't know if he was pulling it, but it just, it was, he said, now, that's all right, but it's not elegant. And then he said, Ooh. I said, and he had this amazing, you know, mixed, uh, sound on it, staying in a staying in a bridging condition, and it was just amazing. You know, he called it covering it. Um, I would call it bridging it. And um, he said, "It sounds easy. Take maybe ten years." <laughs> Pavarotti working on crescendoing on an F in a you know in a more of a, a, a he calls it a covered way. I'd, call it in, in a bridge or a mixed mixed fashion. Took him 10 years. So uh, be patient with yourselves, you guys. Even the best spend lots of time on this. Okay, um, we're getting down to the wire here. We're going to have to call this um, uh, a session today. PB says, uh, uh, how is, I don't know. Uh, Nuno, how can I have a lesson with you? If you go in the description in this video below, uh, there's two things I want you to look at. Number one is um, to get your vocal type. So a couple of you are new here today, and to, to carry this on, something you can use immediately to help you get these high notes without difficulty, is find out what your vocal type is. So go in the description below. Um, I'll, I'll try and put it up in a card uh, so that you can, let me see where it would be. Or, right up there in the corner, um, and it will be entitled, Get Your Vocal Type. It's a PDF. You download that. It takes you to a vocal type test. It takes you to videos about your vocal type. It takes you to exercises for your vocal type. And this, these are exercises that help you get through the bridge. Or if you're too breathy to have, get more into your voice so that when you go through the bridge, you've got some sound left. So. Um, it's, it's, really, it's really required in order to bridge and get these high notes that we've been doing today. And um, the second thing in the description below is uh, uh, schedule a lesson link. There's a link there you can click on and schedule a lesson with me on Skype. Okay, And I think it says schedule a lesson on it. Okay, 
Um, Maggio Lot, how long would you say it would take to master the mixed voice if I practice daily? I'm still 17. Um, to master the mixed voice. Well, that's a good question. I would have to know, you know, what your gift is. Uh, if you're a gifted singer and uh, and you you haven't had much difficulty in the vocal change, it wouldn't it shouldn't take too long to get get your mix down pretty well. On average, I would say uh, several years at least to really to really master it. Amkar, two chooks, thanks. Okay. Uh, Sir, I'm not able to identify my vocal type. Yeah, so take that test and um, and determine it from the test, and then you can um, then you can look at the videos about your vocal type and download the exercises. Okay, uh, yeah, Nuno says I've got some really good materials on the website and YouTube channel about all of that. So. Uh, but the thing that will help you right away, PB, is get the um, download that PDF and start uh, take the test is the first thing. Ankar says, "Thanks, sir. I'm listening in. Great. Um, scratching is one issue. Is what I face a lot. Does that have to do with the nervousness? Not so much. It has to do with the larynx rising. I uh, if the larynx is up, it gets really scratchy. We kind of pinch it together, and so now the vocal cords have this little scratchy sound. Uh, Amkar, I'm guessing that there are times when you can speak and say things without a scratch. So it's always possible that you might have something going on the vocal cords, in, that, in which case nothing will help until you have to have vocal rest to get rid of that. But the scratch is a little bit different than a hoarseness. It's a little bit different than having a a breathy spot in the middle of your voice. Um, okay, so uh, thanks. Yep, the uh, diaphragm support is helpful. Uh, you can go on my website and uh, on the website on the far right side, search breath control in the uh, search icon, breath control, and ep and watch episode 15. It's on diaphragmatic breathing. Um, same topic of vowels on high notes. Uh, let me see. How, I can sing high, but in low volume. How can I increase my volume? Just the way I just demonstrated it today. You want to um, practice doing these exercises, and and just do it louder. But don't let the don't let the vowel change and go wide. You got to keep it in that same place the whole time. No 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 no. Uh, my my vocal type is pulled chest high. Oh, let me see. Apparently, okay. My I my I tend to be my vocal type is pulled chest high larynx. It's very common. Uh, thanks, you guys. Um, thanks for subscribing, uh, PB. Awesome. I think you're going to find a lot of help here. All right, everybody. Great session today. Thanks for all your comments, and I hope this has been helpful. I know I gave uh, more than three exercises to make uh, it easier uh, singing, you know, when you have difficulty singing high notes. But, you know, under promise, over deliver. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but you got more today than we headlined, and I hope that's been helpful. Thanks. I wish you all the best. I'm Chuck Gilmore with Power to Sing, live today, number 128. You can sing higher with beauty, confidence, and power. I'll see you inside the next video. So long.